Hello, I'm Rick Stiver. I'd like to welcome you to Young Martin's Reels. Today's project is going to be the Sears Roebuck uh, 200. And um, it's a, not a bad looking reel. It's in, looks like it'd be in pretty good shape as far as the paint and stuff goes on it. Uh, it does, however, have a cracked spool, and I'm not going to have a replacement for that. I possibly could do a fix on that. If it uh, turns out this reel's worth it, I might be able to do a JV weld fix on that. But for now, let's take a look at the reel and see what we've got. It's a very grindy reel. It makes a lot of noise. So either it's going to be all bound up and choked up full of grease or the gears are shot. One or the other. Or maybe it could be a shimming issue. Um, let's see if the anti-reverse works. Okay, anti-reverse work. Boy, those gears really sound grumbly. Okay. There we go. Let's see if the bail trips. It does. Okay, so, so far, aside from the chipped uh, spool, this thing looks like it's in pretty good shape. Let's see what we got. All right, we're going to take off the drag knob. I don't see any rust or corrosion down in the spool. So I might even have a replacement for this spool if I look hard enough. Uh, well, there's another problem. The clicker spring is broken. Right here, it should come down and be pointing down towards this so that um, it'll rotate on that cog right there. And that part seems to be broken. It's missing. But if you look, this is made out of plastic. And they, that's how they held the spring on. They set the spring in place and melted it in. So this is one that, if it just comes down to mending this and replacing this wire, we're going to be okay. All right. So we're going to set the spool over to the side. Let's see if these come off. They do. All right. And uh, let's try to take off the nut for this. That's too big. That's over here. And let's see, there we go. That counter, oh. okay. Comes off in a counterclockwise direction. This is pretty clean inside actually. It looks really nice. The trip arm down here looks good. Uh, it seems to move well. You can see how it works inside there. Uh, when it is tripped here, there you go. That's nice. Okay, got that off. Um, ooh. Hmm, I don't have a tool for removing that. I think we might have to make one. Hmm. Well, sometimes you can get by with using a snap ring plier in that predicament. I think I've got one up here. That might just do the trick. Depending on how tight it is. Let's see if I can turn this with my snap ring pliers. Not counterclockwise, I can't. Let's try turning it clockwise. No. Neither way did it want to turn. Okay. Well, if... The pinion will come out through the inside. I still might be able to unscrew that out of there using a wide-bladed screwdriver with this out of the way. All right, so let's go ahead and see about taking the handle off, which I should have done prior to taking this, this rotor off. Let's go ahead and slide the rotor down, hold that in place, and see if we can... Un oh. It's going to turn in there. And we'll see if we can get this lined up with the keyway so we can hold it in place there we go slide that down and let's try it there we go handles popped loose there we go take the spool back our rotor back off and all right we're ready to remove these three screws on the side all three screws are the same Put them in the same pile. Okay, and... Ouch. All 
All right. Gonna remove the pin. Let's take out the axle shaft. Remove the cross line block. And that still brings us down to this gear. And it really looks, I don't know how well you guys can see it, but it looks to me as though these gears, the pinion gear, is chewed up. That's my first opinion. Doesn't mean I'm right. Um, it almost appears, if you look, what I was thinking here had happened was that these gears had slipped on here and chewed this up. But if you look, this pinion appears that it's um, ground away all the way up to here, and it, but it's nice and smooth. This is not chewed up. This is the way it's made. I thought at first it was chewed, but it's not. So, and if you look right here, look at this. Okay. There is probably what's causing our gear grinding is this wobble on this gear in this side housing. I'm not sure what we've got in there, but yeah, I think this one may end up being scrap, even though the pinion is not bad like I thought it was. It's not bad, but I think the bushing behind this main gear is bad. And depending on what we got back there, we'll have to wait and see. But in the meantime, I've got to try to figure out a way to get this unscrewed out of here. And that doesn't look like it's going to happen easily, but I think I'm going to end up using a chisel. I don't have a right tool for doing this. Um, there's a part of me that wants to take a wood bit and grind out the center of it so that it fits down over this and uh, fits into here. And you know what? I think that's exactly what I'm going to do. I will be back to you in a little bit. I'm going to take a wood bit and grind it so that it fits this. All right? I'll be back with you in a few minutes. Okay, I'm back. I have no idea if this is going to work or not. Uh, but I took a 5 8 drill bit and uh, ground it down, ground the center out of it, and uh, flattened it a little bit so it'll fit into the notches. I have no idea if this thing's going to have enough strength to hold this or not. So we're going to give it a try. Matter of fact, instead of grabbing it all the way up there, I think I'm going to grab it right here, as close to the end as I can, to try to eliminate as much twist as possible. And let's see what happens if we try. Now remember, this uh, nut came off counterclockwise, so I'm assuming this will too, but we'll try both ways. If it doesn't work one way, we'll try the other way. There we go. Hey! All right, I'm, I'm thrilled. I didn't, <laughs> to be perfectly honest, I didn't think this was going to work. Look at that. All right, so with a little bit of ingenuity. Oh, sorry, you guys didn't even get to see that, man. All right. Uh, basically, I broke it loose using this tool, and I can put it back in the same way. Uh, all I did was grab hold of it up here at this end with my uh, wrench, cranked it, got it to break free. And I'm sure somebody makes a spanner that fits this thing perfectly, but I made one out of a 5 8 drill bit. So, let's get that out. We should be able to pull this out. All right, now, this has a bearing in the front. And there is a bit of wobble in the bearing when it's in here. So, maybe... Oh, well, that doesn't really feel that bad. Okay. And let's push this out and see if there's a bearing behind it. No, it's a bushing. It's built into the housing. So that is a darn shame. All right. 
Well, I'll tell you what I'm going to try to do on this. And I don't know if it's going to work. So before I go spend a whole bunch of time on trying to clean it up, What I'm going to try to do is shim this. If I put that in there like so, and put the pinion back in. Okay, goes like that, and we can tighten this back in. There's my homemade tool. There we go. that back in all right the pinion has got a little bit of wobble so i might be able to try to change out that bearing with a different bearing one that has a little less wobble but what we're trying i'm going to try to do to try to eliminate this in and out movement here what happens when i tighten the handle down do we still have that same amount of play i don't know Okay, we've got play there. So I'm going to try to shim this and see if by shimming it, it will take that grind out. And we'll see what we can do. All right, I have two different sizes of shim as far as thickness. Let's see if we can get this to come back off. Yeah, there we go. All right, and we'll unscrew this to pull it back out. And I'll see if I have any shims that are capable of taking up this play. Without making it so tight that it can't move. Okay, there's any shim washers in there. There are no shim washers in it. I have a feeling this once had a shim washer in it and somebody has lost it. Okay, so let's take this one. It's, I think it's a 5,000 shim washer. Or, oh, that's a bent one. We don't want that one. He's oval. That one's oval shaped. We'll throw that one away. Let's try getting a different one. All right. Put that back inside. handle on and this is going to be a hit or miss trial and error kind of thing it's not just going okay that's too much of a shim because it made it tight when i tighten it down all the way it uh it made the gear very tight so that one's too big take that back off pop him out of there These, I think, they're either 0 0.01 or 0 0.1. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I'm horrible when it comes to sizes. All right, we'll put that on. It's a much thinner feeling shim. Okay, we will put one on there. See how that feels. That feels better, but there's still some wobble left, so let's go and put a second one on. That's better. We're going to shoot for one more shim. Okay, now let's see what happens when we try to put the pinion back in.
Okay, I think what I've done is I've shimmed it the wrong direction. I shimmed it as it put the gear closer into contact with the pinion, it is now really grumbling. So I think the shims, although they help tighten this up tremendously, need to be on the outside instead of the inside. So we're gonna try swapping those around, moving them to shim it back instead of forward and see if that doesn't make it better. And it might just be that these gears are worn out. We're gonna find out very shortly. No, just need to get in there right. Okay, there we go. That's much tighter. Let's try putting the pinion back in. Now let's try putting the rotor back on. Okay. Overall, not too bad, but still not good. Um, trying to figure out a way and I might be able to tighten that rotor Well, tell you what, let's go ahead. This is an experiment, folks. By the way, I'm calling this rail a fail. I'm just seeing if there's anything I can do to it that might make it function better than what it's doing. I don't really know that that's possible. I keep throwing things at it, seeing if something will stick. So far, nothing is sticking. All right, now here's what I can tell you. The pinion gear on this is actually good, even though it looks bad, it's not. It's good. The part that's bad is the uh, main gear. And every time it gets around to right here, it grumbles right there. So those teeth right there are damaged. And yeah, if you look real careful, I think you can see See if I can blow it up enough for you to be able to see. And I couldn't hardly see it with my naked eye. If you look really careful, that tooth, that tooth, and that tooth, and that tooth, the ends of them are very, ever so slightly bent. Facing that direction. They're curved ever so slightly. So they've been bent. Something either got wedged in there. Uh, somebody cranked through this. Uh, but yeah, the main gear is tweaked. Um, what I am going to do, to see if I can justify a little more life out of this reel. I'm going to pull it back apart and I'm going to file the leading edges of those teeth just a little bit, just enough to see if I can pull that back enough and take that grumble out. At least I know what it is now. I mean, there is still some wobble. Don't get me wrong. This reel is not tight by any stretch of the imagination. Um, I'm gonna, But I am going to clean it up and file those teeth down just a little bit. I'll use my magnifying glass up here and see if I can get a good look at it. All right. I have scrubbed the heck out of this thing. There were little bits of metal and stuff down inside several of the teeth on this thing. And uh, with it all cleaned up, it actually looks really good. So I'm gonna try putting it back together and uh, 
see if we might have an operational reel without a grumble. So, start off by installing the shim washer back on. And we'll put some grease on that to help hold it in place. Slide that back in. We've got two sham washers that we're going to put back in this. On the outside, which will separate those gears ever so slightly. And take and crank the handle back on now. Okay, that feels good. I got to go back and clean this pinion now. I haven't done that yet. Okay, I'm back. I got the pinion gear cleaned all out now. And I've got the bearing cleaned. And I think what I've decided to do is I'm putting a shim also on this pinion. I'm going to try it and see how it works. That'll, I'm hoping it's going to take some of that play out of the rotor that was in there. Um, so let's see what happens. screw down collar back in and this is going to be a very choppy video folks and I'm really sorry about that this is another one of those where I'm just trying to explore trying to figure out the best how I can make this thing work again okay that looks pretty good so far let's try putting the rotor back on Tighten down the nut. Hey, that did take some of the play out. Let's see how it... Oh my goodness. Well, the handle's come on and <laughs> come loose, but aside from that, and that's without any grease yet. Okay, and I didn't oil the, the main bearing yet. All right, let's, uh, I think we've got this whooped. I think I had one that I thought was shot and it turns out it's not. So let's go ahead, oil that main bearing. Then grease the main gear and the pinion gear. I'm going to grease the cross round block and set it back on with the pin hole to the rear like that and then we're going to take eh, this axle shaft is a little bit rough I'm going to scotch bright it a little bit all right with that cleaned up let's go ahead and oil it slide that in through the front get it to line up in the cross wound block Get the cross wound block to go back, and we're going to line up that hole right there with the axle shaft and the cross wound block. Get the two holes lined up. Show you that doing that again. There we go. Reinstall the pin. And we're going to put the side plate on. All right, now we need to clean up this rotor and it is spring-loaded 
on one side. I'm not sure which side yet, but I'm pretty sure it's going to be this side over here. And it, it's working beautifully. But you know that I always try to take things apart if we can. So let's go ahead. You guys, I don't want you to take this apart. Just spray it down with a little w oil or WD-40 and it should be fine. All right, we're going to take out this screw and see if this will come out. It doesn't want to. Okay, let's come around to this side then. See if we can remove the bail wire. Let's try this one. There we go. Okay. Now, I don't have a problem with taking this bell wire apart. And you can you should be able to do that in order to uh, get in here and take any corrosion that's on out. And uh, if I can pop this loose over here, what I want to do is take, yeah, I'm going to take this end right here. See how it's all corroded? I'm going to take that and put it over here on my wire wheel on my bench grinder and see if we can't clean that up. Okay. And I don't know yet if that's a roller that comes off or not. I guess we'll find out in a minute. In the meantime, let's get back over here. This part is spring-loaded, and this is the part that I think you should not, should not take apart. Okay. And I don't know what it's going to take to make it work again. Once I've popped it loose, uh, let's see if I can see a tag end somewhere where the spring would locate. I don't see anything. So let's see what's going to happen. See, I've got a curved screwdriver that I made for fitting that. There it is right there. And it may. Yep, the screw's going to come out. <coughs> and I'm going to hold this in for a minute while we take this out. Okay, there we go. All right, this has got the, the little hook piece on the end of it, so we know how that's gonna go. Let's see if we can see how this is gonna go. It's gonna come around this way when we go to put it back. Okay, and it's already unhooked. So there we go. And we can take that, okay, so this tag end here, the one that's sticking out like this, is gonna go in this slot over here. So that's gonna give me a chance to clean this out right here. And I'm going to do that with just a uh, small screwdriver, this one here, and a rag. I'm going to spray a little WD-40 in there to help dissolve any corrosion that might be in there. I didn't say it will take out all the corrosion, but it will help. Okay, now I take that screwdriver and just kind of run it around in that slot to try to get any debris out that's in there. All right, let's take a look at our spring. Spring is in really good shape. So we're gonna set it back in here. Like I said, the tag in right there goes into this slot over here, like that. And let me take just a moment and clean this out right here. There we go. All right, ooh. We're going to take this over to the bench grinder as well and clean it up. So that's two parts I'm going to put on the bench grinder to clean corrosion off of. I'll be right back. All right, that cleaned up pretty well. So now we're going to see if we can get this part put back on. And i got to remember the proper way for it to go in. It's going to come back like this. Like this. And it'll be upright like that. And then it'll come back and catch here, that's not right. Okay. Gotta get that up past there, set it in. Let's put our big screw back in. Now I'm holding against this screw tension, the spring tension. Okay, it's trying to pop out the whole time I'm holding it here. 
go. All right. This part cleaned up very well. Remember what it looked like before? And cleaned it up real nice. So I set that back in place. Like so. Put on our washer and our nut. And we're going to just lightly snug that. We don't want to tighten it yet. Not until we get the other side in place. Because it, what it can do, if you tighten that down and then try to set this in place and it causes it to uh, bind, then your uh, bail will not function properly. All right, I'm gonna put this screw in now. Which, to be perfectly honest, doesn't really look like it's the right screw, but it works, so. There we go. All right, now, it feels just a little bit tight, so let's loosen it up here. There we go. And then tighten it down. Put that side in place. And let's see. There we go. Now we're going to come back. We're going to oil along the edge right here, along the head of the screw. We're going to oil this trip right here. Exercise a little bit to work the oil in. And we come back and add one single drop of oil there. They say that you shouldn't have to oil that, but I never think it hurts a tag on thing to have a little oil. So, back. oh, we're back to this. All right. Well, I'm going to tell you, I'm <laughs> I'm going to fix that, uh, and I'm going to let you guys watch me fix it, and that should be fun. But in the meantime, let's go ahead and pop out this spring. drag washer our top one there's our felt one and that's all there is there okay so we'll run a cotton swab through there to make sure it's good and clean we'll set the felt one back in we're going to give it three drops of oil one two three we're going to wipe off the drag washer slip back in and let's put the spring back in now this is one of those that will definitely shoot if you're not careful folks these five-sided ones here they they really like to shoot if you're not careful all right now that brings us to repairing this wire and what i'm going to do the first thing i want to do is find out what diameter wire we're dealing with Okay, so first thing we're going to do is find out what diameter wire I'm dealing with. Looks like it's going to be a 22. Okay, so let's see if I've got a 22 spring wire up here. Okay, so the 21 is going to be the closest that I have to what was originally in there. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to create a new bell uh, spring. Okay, we're going to start it right there. And then we are going to curve it up just slightly.
Hey! There's the clicker. All right. All right, and fast forward, you just seen me tinkering and playing and tinkering and playing with this thing, trying to get this spring done. And uh, if you look at it, it still isn't worth a nothing. What I'm going to do is I'm going to heat this back up and pull this out. And I'm going to redo it, put in a, I'm going to make a brand new spring. And I'm going to show you a much better way than what I've been doing to uh, adjust this spring. I guess I could still use this one if, let's see, if I can make it work. Um, We really need to pull it in quite a bit. Okay, like this. Okay, and that's not too bad actually right there. Now, I kept trying to put this on the reel and it wouldn't work and I couldn't figure out what to do. What I really should have been doing all along was taking the axle back out and then setting it into place and adjusting this and setting it into place with the axle in. That way we can see what's hitting and what's not hitting, okay? So, uh, right now, it still isn't looking all that good. Let's bring it up a little bit. And uh, this really has to go down inside this spring quite a bit. Like so. And uh, let's see what we got. Okay, that held for just a second and then popped loose and went in a totally different direction. Okay. Yeah. I've got to figure out a way to make a spring so that it fits down here. The biggest problem is we've got this lip right here. And it has to come out to the lip and then go over the lip and into there. And so what it really needs is to be laying flat against this and yet come over the lip and still catch. Um, so I'm really thinking this has been bent way too many times to continue messing with it. So I'm going to work on taking it out of there. Um, Z into it. So that it will hold once it's in. And then I'm going to set it into place over here and use my hot screwdriver to melt it into place. So here we go. One more time. Okay, one thing I have learned is that the plastic from a zip tie can also be melted down into something like this. And let's see how that'll work for us. Okay, that's heading in the proper direction and everything. Ain't the prettiest in the world, but it is functional. It still is going to need 
this spool repaired and I am not gonna try to do that on camera. I'm going to uh, mix up some putty, I think. I think I got some uh, moldable putty. I'm gonna clean this good with some acetone and then I'm gonna come back with some moldable putty, epoxy putty and mold it into there and uh, see if we can't shape, reshape that uh, and smooth it and get it to where it's gonna work okay and then I'll just shoot this whole thing black and it's actually going to make a fairly decent little reel, I think, for some kid. All right. I, I will not post this video until I've repaired that and shown you guys the repair. All right. I've uh, molded some epoxy and put it in there. And uh, I'm going to let it cure up and see if I can sand it out smooth and paint it to match. And we'll see what happens. Uh, if I can get that done, this will be a good little reel for somebody. All right, let's see how it goes. Okay, now the spool has been re repaired. The broken out piece, I have um, used an epoxy putty uh, to fill that. Uh, there it is. Yeah, kneaded it, mended it, and it was white, and I took the whole thing and reshot it in uh, black. But it's smooth enough now that it's not going to cause a line grabbed. And uh, I think we're about ready to put this thing back together. All the way. Okay, put the spool back on. Oh, wait a minute, I gotta put the uh, drag washers back in, re-oil them. Got that one upside down. The scarred side goes up. And let's put the spring back in to hold it all in place. And I'll use this little screwdriver for that. Okay, that's all reinstalled. Put the spool back on. down the drag. There's our drag clicker, which took so much work to do. Nice drag for as small a drag as it is. It's a it's a good panfish rod and, uh, reel. I'm going to be putting it onto a spinning reel, a rod, and uh, we'll get this, well, let's see. So we got a little old tape right here, and eh. Let's see if I can get that off. Don't want to scratch the paint any more than it already is. Um, the really plus thing here is this reel was destined to go into the parts rack. Um, we had already decided that uh, the gears were bad and then it needed to just become a parts reel. But the reality is the gears were not bad on this. Matter of fact, they're in very good condition once I got all the junk out of them. Uh, there was some uh, debris down inside that main gear. There were four teeth that had debris down inside them. But the debris, whatever it was, was the same color as the reel. And without the using this magnifier here, I couldn't see it. Uh, once I got used that magnifier, blew it up, I was able to look in between the teeth and I was able to see that there was debris in there, clean the debris out. And uh, this thing works like a champ now, folks. And it, that main bearing is a little bit noisy, but uh, if somebody really wanted to, they could change that. And... Uh, Let's see how the, look at that. Flip the bail. 
And there you have the Sears Roebuck 200, number 779.313240 fishing reel. I hope you liked the video. Uh, I, I put a lot of heart and effort into this one, um, trying to bring things back to life that a normal repairman would never do. Uh, if it was your dad's reel or something like that, you would probably go into all that effort to make it work. Uh, I'm only doing it for you guys. Uh, I'm going to be putting this onto a uh, rod for a kid, and uh, it's going to find a home out there. If you, uh, like I said, if you like the video, please hit the like button. If you didn't, hit the dislike button. Tell me what you didn't like. And if you'd like to see more videos like this, uh, hit the subscribe button. For now, that's Rick Stivers with Young Martin's Reels signing out.